What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I wanted a quick run through a few questions you guys had on my ProCube video. And before we get into it, I'd like to clarify one thing on the ProCube k &R Performance discount code. The discount code has actually changed. It was a little bit confusing before what products it actually applied to, but no more confusion. It's GALLSTAR5, that is the code, and it applies store-wide now, and it's 5% off of your order. If you want to add one of everything to your shopping cart, it's going to apply 5% off your entire purchase, so it's actually a better deal for you guys. Go ahead and check them out, krperformance.com. Get yourself a ProCube, get yourself a dial on board, get yourself an onboard air system, whatever it is that you need, all the trick bracket racing parts over at krperformance.com. Use code GALLSTAR5. All right, so the first question comes here from Chad. He says, I have been using my steering wheel trans brake button held down while steering the car in reverse. It's a bit clumsy while turning. If I set the lockout to 20 seconds as you did, would I just have to hit the trans brake button once and it would be locked out and I could do all of my reversing? Check it out, Chad, with Z-Force. It's actually way easier than that because you can see on my delay box, if I go ahead and hit the trans brake button just once, let go, the trans brake is actually activated uh, because of the push method. You have to actually click it to set it and then click it a second time to activate the trans brake. So when I'm on the track, I just click it once and if my car was in reverse right now, I could go ahead and roll backwards. So that's how simple it is. I don't have to hold down the button when I'm in Z-Force mode. I'm just gonna go ahead and back the car back up, um, and then when I you know, cross the starting line, I'm ready to stage up, drop it into gear, hit the reset button on the Pro Cube, and I'm ready to stage up. So that's really how simple it is with Z-Force, you don't have to worry about any of that. I've never really seen that as being an advantage to using Z-Force, but I guess it's just another little hidden benefit to, uh, to trying out Z-Force. It makes the, the reverse process a lot easier, I guess. All right, question number two comes from Jerry. He says he is rewiring his car this winter and definitely going with the K&R kit. Myself as well. Video's coming soon. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, all the things. Uh, he often runs both classes, meaning he's going to be pulling the box in and out of the car, running box and no box. Uh, with that being said, he's worried about the switches being fragile and getting damaged. Seems like some of the other boxes with a push button might be a little bit more durable for his application. Uh, what are my thoughts? Well, Jerry, I'll tell you what, the uh, ProCube, the switches on here, although, I mean, I can see that as being a concern, potentially, but I've never seen uh, one of these switches broken before in, in all of my experience with it. I think the box is super durable. These switches are, are really strong and they're really short, so I feel like it would really take, you know, you dropping it maybe just right on the pavement or something if, if you're going to actually bust one of those switches off. Um, some of the other delay boxes out there, like you mentioned, some of the delay boxes with the uh, flat buttons, the durability issues I see with those is they have a huge screen on them, and I've actually seen a, a couple of those screens go bad over the years, and uh, so that's not an issue that you run into with the ProCube. So as far as durability goes, I think there's pros and cons to, to all the products out there, but uh, I've never seen a problem with a ProCube delay box as far as durability goes. Question number three comes from Jim. He says, thanks for running through the operations of the Pro Cube, still curious about the starting line routine and getting consistent with Z Force. I'm sure it's just a matter of practice and making passes, but definitely would be interested in a video on starting line techniques and routines. All right, I'll tell you what, Jim, we'll go ahead and do it, but it's really not that uh, difficult to drive this car. It's pretty simple, but we'll go ahead and run through uh, a pass, I guess. We kind of have the car completely tore apart, so you might be able to see everything as far as shifter goes and everything anyway. So I'll just hop in the car and we'll, uh, we'll run through a pass quick. All right, so assuming we're strapped into the car, we got the helmet on, we got the neck collar on, all the safety gear, uh, arm restraints, buckled in with the Pro One seat belts, we're ready to go on to a pass. So it, it's pretty simple. We're going to fire up the car by making sure the battery is turned on, turn on the ignition, and then hit the starter button. Um, after the car is running, we'll go ahead and make sure the temperature is good. Here's the water pump. We'll have the water pump on. We'll turn the fan on once we, once we reach 150 degrees. I always like to monitor my temperatures very closely. Uh, make sure that I always have the, the consistent same uh, water temperature and transmission fluid temperature every time I stage the car as close as possible, obviously for consistency. So those are those controls. Uh, we'll go ahead and drop the car into gear, roll through 
the water into the burnout box. I will shift up into high gear, and this right here is the rev limiter for my burnout. So we'll go ahead and click that button down, hold it down, uh, roll the car forward in high gear, stomp on the throttle, do the burnout, let off nice and easy. We don't want to chirp the tires. That's going to put a nice glazing on the tire. It's actually going to hinder your traction on the starting line. So we like to let off of the throttle nice and easy and try to minimize that chirp, that burp, that chirp sound that happens right at the end of the burnout. We want to minimize that. So ease off the throttle, come out of the burnout, let go of the burnout button and uh, hit the brake pedal and stop the car. I like to stop the car as quickly as possible after the burnout. I don't like to be rolling around on the track any more than I have to for fear of getting any kind of contaminants or anything on my tires. So after the burnout is complete, go ahead and go all the way up to park. Then I like to drop it back down into reverse. At this point, I'll click the trans brake button one time. You can see that the trans brake is now activated and the car is backing up in reverse. So I'll go ahead and back up. And again, I barely, barely pass the starting line. Again, I just don't like to roll around on the track any more than I have to. I like to minimize the distance that my tires travel between the completion of the burnout and staging the car. So I don't like to back up any extra than I have to either. So I'll back up, barely pass the uh, stage beams, stop the car. I'll go ahead and hit the reset button that uh, now the car is not gonna be backing up anymore. I hit the reset button, go ahead and drop it into low gear car is in low gear now I'm ready to stage the car so this is where uh, the kind of the starting line routine that you guys were asking about comes into play there's there's not much to it but this is what I do I try to stay nice and calm and relaxed in the car I, I typically see two approaches at the racetrack either the people that are super super tense and release really violently uh, there's a lot of people that do that and they do that with a lot of success and then there's the opposite which is what I do and I kind of get really slouched down in my seat I get super relaxed I get this whole arm kind of supported on my side here so that I'm not I don't have any tense action going on at all in this arm and then I'm really just focusing on my breathing and uh, trying to be calm alert and focused at the starting line so I'll go ahead and just gently ease the brake pedal and bump into pre-stage. Go ahead and use these three fingers on the side of my steering wheel to kind of get good firm placement and make sure that this finger isn't going to be jiggling around or missing the button in any way. So I'll make sure I get good and firm on the right side of the steering wheel there just using the index finger on the trans brake button. At this time, it's ready to go in and stage. So a lot of things happen quickly now. So I'll go ahead and bump the car into stage. Once it is staged, click the trans brake button, release the brake pedal, wait for the bulb to come on. Once the bulb comes on, we'll hit it. I'll go up with my left hand, flip the visor down, both hands on the steering wheel, throttle all the way down. Once the trans brake releases, the car launches. I'll go ahead, get sitting up in my seat, and I'll try to get sat up in my seat as best as possible. Try to find the opponent on the racetrack, whether I'm looking forward or back, just trying to get an eye on them, look at an eye on the finish line, look at an eye on them, back and forth. Talked about this in a couple other videos. The car is gonna shift itself. There's nothing I need to do there. It's air shifted off of time. It's gonna shift at 2.7 seconds throughout the run. Go through to the finish line. Hopefully I can run the wheel on the guy and get to the line just in time. Hopefully my wind light comes on, everything is good. If not, I'm, uh, you guys see my reactions uh, in the videos. So let off the throttle, um, watch the oil pressure as I'm hitting on the brakes. As the oil pressure is going down, it's going down. If it's going down too much and I'll let off the brake a little bit, that's kind of how I slow the car down is by watching the oil pressure gauge on the dash. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I hope that answers your questions, Jim. That's kind of how I go about a pass in the race car. Um, a lot happens really quick, as you know, but specific to Z-Force, there's nothing that's too drastically different than actually releasing. Uh, my, my best suggestion would be to just sit in the car in your garage, just like this, and, and do some practice hits. Get, get comfortable with it. It is, it is different mentally. Uh, practice trees can really help get get your, your mind wrapped around that mentally because you kind of got to think about, you know, I'm hitting the light, I'm shooting the light instead of trying to come off the light 
it's a little bit different kind of thinking and it, it is a little bit of a different routine in the car but hopefully this helped you a little bit um, if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button let YouTube know it would really mean a lot to me hit subscribe if you like this kind of content turn on the bell for notifications you won't miss any more videos thank you guys so much for all the support catch you guys in the next video later if you liked this video, let YouTube know. Please hit the like button, click subscribe, and visit the Gallstar TV swag shop to help support the creation of more videos.